So my name is uh, Sam Bell. Uh, I'm a new uh, associate research scientist here. And what I want to talk to you about today is some of the work I've been doing on cratering statistics. So this is the first part of a much longer project to really dig into and understand all of the complicated uncertainties around cratering statistics, but this is just the first part. Um, and I'm uh, presenting a, a new Python package uh, that I've written to handle fully Poisson crater statistics. So as we all know, the or many of us have uh, already seen the very classic very standard cratering statistics. We've probably all worked with these at some point in the past. Uh, they were standardized in the late 70s by the Crater Analysis Techniques Working Group, uh, who made some approximations that really made sense in the 1970s. One of the biggest ones was just treating error as proportional to the square root of the number of craters. So one of the things that meant is that uh, one minus the square root of one is zero. So on a log log plot, the error goes down to negative infinity for an observation of one. Here is an example uh, where you can see little arrows going down to negative infinity. So the, uh, these methods were uh, put together in a very widely used code uh, made by Greg Michael, a classic IDL code. Here is a slide I stole from his presentation that he gave eight years ago where he uh, details how user-friendly and easy to use this particular code is. But it has been one of the most important developments, I think, in, in planetary science and has become a real workhorse and is con constantly used in paper after paper after paper, makes plots, does analyses using this code. Here's an example from just uh, a month or two ago using crater stats to date uh, the uh, crater uh, near the Changi landing site. Now, there has always been a slightly awkward reality around cratering statistics, uh, which is that in fact, uh, the square root of n approximation is not fully correct. So I'm not gonna go into all the details of the math, but it's been well established. This is, uh, uh, an area of math that's uh, extremely well settled, uh, which is basically Poisson counting statistics. And the true error distribution I have plotted here for an, N, an observation of n equals one, um, as you can see uh, in blue is the true error distribution, which is highly asymmetric, and in red is the square root of n approximation, where uh, there's a small possibility if you treat it as a Gaussian normal distribution with the standard deviation of one that you can have a negative count, which is obviously wrong. So this is why the distribution is actually asymmetric. And the people who do, uh, so, so here's a, a comparison table uh, showing, this is from my Saturn paper, showing uh, uh, basically the difference between the true error and the true medians uh, and the predicted error and predicted medians. Uh, one of the things is that in fact, because it's asymmetric, the median value is always gonna be slightly larger than the actual observed value. And you can tell that the square root of n approximation really, uh, while it's good for very large n, breaks down when your n is smaller than about 10 and you get significant error. But it's very common to have bins with fewer than 10 craters in them. Now, the people who make crater stats are good scientists and they're well aware of this problem. And so they have come up with this Poisson timing method to try and implement the true Poisson error. Uh, the issue with this method is that they have basically set it up so that it only dates based off the total number of craters in a single diameter interval. So that means it's heavily dependent on the selection of the diameter interval. And that also means that the selection of an empty interval matters. So this is an example uh, from the, the paper presenting this method where they have four different intervals, each that contain the same two craters, but based off how much empty uh, diameter range they contain, the age that results varies by quite a bit. It also means it's very sensitive to secondary cratering, to diameter roll-offs, to saturation, um, and uh, because it's basically just the equivalent of dating the left-hand point on a cumulative plot. And uh, 
they also, because it's a plot free approach, do not update the uh, individual plots with the correct error bars for individual points. So here's an example of the Poisson timing methods being implemented using crater stats. Uh, this is just from this year. Uh, there are tons of examples of these methods being used. Uh, here, for instance, it is dating um, uh, a resurfacing uh, where it's dating the oriental ejecta as a younger surface with the underlying surface underneath it. And as you can tell, uh, when you look at the underlying surface, because the dating is heavily tilted towards the left-hand side of the interval, it winds up coming up with a fit uh, that plots uh, to the bottom of where the points uh, at larger the larger diameter range plot. And so it's an example of it probably undercounting or un underestimating the age. So here's a, uh, an example of what uh, my package does. So first thing it does is, is it reproduces all of the standard plots that we've all grown to love. Uh, and here's an example with an unbinned cumulative plot. Uh, these are plotting uh, count data from uh, the Robbins et L 2014 paper on human error in uh, crater counting. And so uh, in this example, we have a very classic uh, thing from the moon where we see uh, an inflection point due to equilibrium saturation. And we can also see that because the true error bars are plotted, we don't see even for the first observation of n equals one, it going down to negative infinity. We see the true error. Now for doing the actual dating, uh, I'm gonna do it off an incremental plot. And there are a couple of reasons for that. One of the reasons is that uh, incremental plots are, in, each point is entirely independent from each other. With a cumulative plot, you add, uh, the one point depends on the next point, and so you have a lot of covariance between the points. Um, and in this case, we also have an empty bin here, which is the uh, gray bin, which represents an observation of zero craters, which also needs to be factored into the observations. So the first step is to convert each uh, bin that we're going to use for the dating to uh, a probability density function, a PDF that shows the probability of the true underlying cratering rate based off the observations of zero, one, two, three, four, however many craters are in the bin. Um, and we've highlighted some of them in black and then zoomed in on them uh, because those are the six that are unsaturated that we'll be using in the dating. The first step here is then to convert these into um, PDFs of n of one. n of one is a statistic that means the cumulative number of craters larger than a diameter of one kilometer. Uh, to do this, we have to project out using uh, a production function. Here I've used the new Neukam production function, which is probably the most popular lunar production function. We have to project out uh, from the actual diameter range observed. So uh, the next step here is going to be uh, multiplying together these PDFs. But first, we have to add in uh, a new PDF um, plot uh, to represent uh, the information that we gain from the fact that there are no craters larger than the largest diameter crater. Then we can then multiply them all together and we get the final PDF in blue showing uh, the probability density function for um, n of one of all of the data combined. And then to convert that to age, we just apply a chronology function. Here I've used a normalized version of the Neukamm chronology function at both with and without an error model. So uh, just to uh, finish up here, um, I want to compare some of the pluses and minuses of the new package compared with uh, the standard crater stats package. So the advantage of crater counter, which is the new package I've written, is it's written in Python, which means that it's, uh, although you do need coding experience to use it, it's open source. It can be easily incorporated into your code and modified. Um, and you can actually look very closely at exactly what I've done and exactly how the code works. It makes all the standard plots and it uses the true error in the plots. It allows for the full Bayesian PDF age analysis rather than just the um, Poisson timing single interval analysis. It makes several additional corrections 
and there will be many more additional improvements coming, especially uh, when my proposal is funded. And um, I uh, would love if you would uh, download the code today. You can download it from GitHub. I have a version uh, up there. And please give me comments if you think there are problems with the code, uh, things you don't understand, things that aren't clear about the method, um, and uh, if you have any suggestions. And so finally, I think we will be taking uh, questions, but not pre-recorded ones. 